Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome. Today, we have a new pistol for the channel, and that is the Canik TP9SF. I've got a little over 500 rounds through this, about 600. So, I'm gonna give you my thoughts, a, little, a couple specifications. This gun's been around for a long time, so it's not like you haven't heard of it or haven't seen it probably, um, but a few, a few specifications, my thoughts on the pistol and my experiences thus far. So, let's get into it. First, something that would be super helpful for the channel, if you could scroll down just a little bit, hit that subscribe button, hit the notification bell, hit all notifications if you want more videos and you like uh, content like this. It certainly helps the channel, helps with the algorithm and so on and so forth. All the stuff you've heard from other gun tubers. Also, leave a comment down below, that helps as well if you wanna support the channel. Those are the best ways and most free ways to do it. Uh, sharing videos is phenomenal, fantastic, I love it. And it is the best way to get the channel out out there I'm trying to hit another 10,000 subscribers this year yet I don't know if I'm gonna make it but I sure hope I can and maybe you can help me out with that other ways to support the channel is to of course become a member of the channel it's very inexpensive you get members only posts uh, and video previews and of course you can always shop through affiliate links which you can find at my website in the description let's get into the Canik TP9 SF. So, to be honest, I didn't mean to get this gun. I meant to get a Canik, but uh, I was uh, down with a really bad flu there a handful of weeks ago, and I actually ended up getting this one on a sort of a NyQuil coma, and I thought I was going, I thought I was buying an optic ready model of Canik, and I wasn't, so I have this one. So Canik has sort of been digging themselves out of a slump over the last few years. Um, they had a reputation, let's say a reputation, of being not so reliable, not really well-built guns. Um, they had some issues. They had some issues uh, some time ago and were sort of in that same category as like the polymer-framed Ruger pistols, Springfield XDs, uh, the uh, uh, polymer frame Taurus pistols, the earlier ones before the G series, um, and just not good guns, especially uh, as, a, as it pertains to like reliability and quality of manufacturing. Again though, Canik has been pulling themselves out of that hole uh, for some time now, and this is one of the ones that they have that is a pretty darn nice pistol. So a couple of quick things about this. It's a four, I'm gonna round up. I'm not gonna give you exact measurements. I don't care. Um, four and a half inch barrel. It's about five and a half inches tall, about seven and a half inches long, uh, just under an inch and a half wide. Uh, it's got a pretty nice trigger, but there's, there's parts of this trigger I don't like, parts of this trigger I do like. Um, and I know Canik recently has been sort of becoming known for nicer triggers uh, out there, especially in their price range. Uh, this one has a couple things I probably could do without, but it's still a pretty nice trigger once you get to the wall. 18 plus one capacity, they do sell it in a 10 round as well. Uh, Removable back straps. This is the secondary one, not the one that came on it. This is a little bit fatter one. Fits my hand a little bit better. Fits the curvature of my hand a little bit better. Uh, of course, a uh, 1913 rail up front, dovetail sights, uh, loaded chamber indicator, uh, and all that fun stuff. As you can see, uh, 
It is a Cerakote, what they call FDE. It's not what I would call FDE. This is not the FDE that I'm used to seeing. Um, I had actually bought a TLR1 in FDE to put on it and it was not even close to the same. Like, like 50 shades of FDE doesn't even cover it. Put the black one on, looks much nicer. But this is what they call their FDE. Now everything underneath the Cerakote is a nitride coating as well as the nitride coating on the barrel. Now for grip texture, it has uh, some really aggressive grip texture front and rear of the, of the grip there. It has mild stippling type texture in these panels on either side of the grip here and in on both sides there is a little bit of texturing here there is no um, place to put your thumb like a gas pedal area no sort of a ridge there but there is at least texturing there where if you bear into the pistol you can uh, help manage recoil that way now it is of course chambered in nine millimeter has a reasonably generous sort of a beaver tail right here um, and if you choke up on it real well the bore axis is not the lowest out there but the bore axis is pretty low makes for a nice shootable pistol and of course being full size my giant monkey paws fit on there pretty good uh, another quarter inch lower and my <laughs> my uh, little finger would be falling off that ledge speaking of the grip down here at the bottom there are two little chamfered in areas that if you get into a bind and have to forcefully strip out the mag you can get your fingers in there and strip that magazine out now, Canik has sort of a weird numbering system, in my opinion, um, but uh, this is the TP9SF, there's TP9 others, and a whole bunch of other ones. Uh, SF standing for Special Forces, I don't know why, they don't really explain it on the website, but that's what it's called, is the TP9SF Special Forces. So let's get into the trigger. The trigger for me is a love-hate relationship. Um, most Canics. I would say yes, all, all to most Canics that I have shot, this is the first one I've owned, I have friends that have Canics, I've shot a bunch of them, um, have good to very good triggers in them. And the break on this one is very good. I would call it right around four pounds, uh, and then the reset is super short. However, the journey to getting to the break kinda sucks. I wouldn't say it sucks, but it's not, it's not great by any means and what i mean by that is this so that is where i would expect the wall to be so you have about three sixteenths of travel there and it's very free travel there's no like sponginess or anything uh very free travel to there however once you get to there there's another three sixteenths of travel or so maybe a little less before you get to the actual wall. And that's been one of the problems I've had with getting used to this trigger is that initial false wall, uh, I ran into the same problem with the XD in 10 millimeter, uh, where there's like a false wall. And whenever I present, I prep the trigger to the wall. Well, my finger, cause that wall is about where, or this false wall is about where a Glock 19's wall is. Right? So I always prep to the wall, as I present out, prep to the wall, and then fire. Well, my problem is, is now I'm sludging through another six, 3 16 of an inch, maybe less, before I get to the actual break and fire. I am getting used to it, but it is something that I've had to very much get used to. So again, very free travel up to the false wall. Well, that's what I'm just going to call it from now on. This last eighth inch 316 here is very gritty, very grimy, and picks up the poundage from here to here is basically nothing. I would say that's about two to three pounds of crap. And then you get to the wall, and it's probably about a four pound break. Very nice break. And then the reset, very short. And again, very nice break. Very short, very nice break. Very short, very nice break. Like I said, so the trigger itself, the break and the reset are really, really nice. The 
journey to the break is less than desirable. However, this is on the top end of budget prices. So um, I'm not making an excuse for it, but I think it is a nice trigger. Just understand this is right around 400 pairs of socks and um, in that price range, it's not bad. Again, I wish it was better, wish the trigger was better, but in that sort of price range, um, I can't say as I uh, am gonna hold it really heavy against it. So shootability, returning sights back to zero. Uh, it is a, a nice shooting gun. It uh, doesn't have a whole lot of recoil impulse for a gun this size. Again, the bore axis is fairly low, uh, not as low as some, but not especially not as high as others. Uh, but the bore axis is fairly, fairly low. Uh, the return to zero is pretty good. I'm not a big fan of the sights. They're not bad. I don't really much care for the U-notch in the back, but if you're paying attention to your rear sight, uh, then you're probably shooting wrong. Um, but the white front dot is very white and very big. Uh, so it's, a, it's very easy to pick up that front white dot. Of course, there are sights you can buy for these. They're very easy to change out dovetail sights. So if they're not something you're into, that's an easy fix. Now, the members of my channel got to see the first shots with this. Probably, I think it was the first 100 or 200 rounds with it. Um, and I've not had a single malfunction with it thus far in about 600 rounds. I've shot a couple different kinds of ammo through it, 115 grain ball, 124 grain ball, and uh, some 135 grain Horn Hornady Critical Duty Plus piece. Um, and it ate and fed all those just fine. Haven't had a magazine problem, uh, haven't had a function problem or anything like that. So uh, again, at, a, at its price range, I think this is a very well functional functioning firearm. So final thoughts on the Canik TP9SF. Uh, it's not FDE. I'm refused to call this FDE, uh, but uh, good shooting gun. I think overall, especially at, uh, like I said, about 400 pairs of socks, um, this thing is well worth the money. It's a good shooter. I have my issues with the trigger that I'm working through. Um, I sort of wish that was better, but it's got a really good break, really good reset, and uh, it's real comfortable in the hand, real accurate to shoot. Uh, you don't have to, how do I say, try? But, uh, you know, there's not a whole lot of struggle to get accurate shots off with this, which is great, and I uh, attribute that to the really, really nice trigger break in it uh, as well as how it fits my hands and lower bore axis good gun you'll be seeing more of it on the channel this is mine that's not borrowed from anybody i paid for it with my own money uh, and so you can rest assured that everything i've said is very very honest as usual all right thanks for watching everybody don't forget to hit like share subscribe hit that notification bell if you want more videos from me Expect to see more from the Canik TP9SF on the channel, and there's a few more other various pistols coming my way. Uh, so look for that stuff as well. Um, trying to branch out my content away from, not away from, but to be something other than just Glock when it comes to pistol videos, and this is one of the early Fourier's into that. Thank you guys for watching out there. Thank you to all my supporters. The Nats are going crazy. It rained like, cra like crazy last night and they're driving me nuts. So we'll talk to you guys later.